Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and this is my channel, Vitcha. In this video, we're going to cover 10 things that you may or may not know about Fallout 4. We'll brush over topics based in game mechanics, secrets, easter eggs, and things that are just simply fun to know. But all of these Fallout topics are either obscure or widely unknown. Now, the topics will get more difficult as we go, so remember to play the game where if you learn something new, you hit the like button. But if you already know everything, don't feel bad to, you know, also hit the like button. Alright, let's get started. So for number 10, we're going to start with a few random things that are pretty easy. But I mentioned these topics to some friends who have been playing Fallout for years and they had no idea. So the first thing that you may not know is that if you hold down the reload button, you'll holster your weapon. This also causes you to run faster, and in some conversations, will have a better chance of persuasion success if you approach with no weapon. The next one is that by holding down your Pip-Boy button for a few seconds, you can turn on a flashlight. Just be careful when sneaking though, because you're more visible when it's on. And lastly, this is a new one. When you're on the menu screen, aka looking at your Pip-Boy, if you hit the same button that enters your settlement building mode, it will zoom in on your Pip-Boy screen, giving you a much more focused look at the interface. Alright, for the next one we're going to talk about a few topics covering everybody's favorite pet, dog meat. One thing that you may not know is that if you start a trade with dog meat and place a teddy bear in its inventory, he'll then toss it around like a rag doll. Also, if you're anything like me, then you hate the other companions of Fallout 4. Not just because the AI is flimsy and feels like it's made out of paper mache, but because Fallout is essentially a game about kleptomania and I have a compulsive hoarding disorder and I need to collect everything in the game, and all the companions have to chime in every five seconds to tell me about the stuff I'm taking. I guess you've got your reasons, but that just looks like junk to me. You sure that's worth taking with us? You sure that's worth taking with us? You sure that's worth- you sure that's worth taking with us? You ask me, freedom's all- I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing, Preston! I don't wanna wait for a night. And don't even get me started on Cogsworth. I feel like every time I upgrade an item, he's over there in the corner watching me like some pervert. Hmm, what's he upgrading now? Oh, upgrading the armor again, are we? Put that pit boy in that leg. Oh, oh! So naturally, I opt to use the Lone Wanderer perk, the one that allows you to carry more and take less damage as long as you're traveling alone, without a companion or a dog. Well, this might be true of other dogs, but dog meat just ain't any other dog. So what you may not know is that even with dog meat at your side, you'll still gain the benefits of the Lone Wanderer perk regardless of having dog meat with you on your travels. Now that's pretty awesome. He's the only one who doesn't judge me. I have stuff to build, okay? Come on, boy. It's time to go. Now speaking of the Lone Wanderer perk, let's talk about the Lone Wanderer. This was the name applied to the protagonist in Bethesda's first foray into the series with Fallout 3. What you may not know is that if you go to a little parking lot just south of the Starlight Drive-In, you can find a motorcycle that seems to be not too special. Well, upon closer inspection, it can be seen that the words Lone Wanderer are a relief on the frame of the motorcycle side. Now, the events of Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 take place about 10 years apart, so who knows? Maybe the Lone Wanderer took a ride out to Boston after Washington. I don't know. One thing is clear though, the motorcycle is definitely a nod to the protagonist of Bethesda's first Fallout game. For the next one, we're going to look at the Pip-Boy Game Boy? Essentially, you can find five special hollow tapes across the Commonwealth. Each tape is a parody and nod to a game that, at one point, paved the way for gaming as it stands today. Those games are Red Menace, a parody to Donkey Kong, Atomic Command, which is like Missile Command, Zeta Invaders, like Space Invaders, Pitfall, just like the Atari classic Pitfall, and last but definitely not least is Grognak the Barbarian in the Ruby Ruins. The Grognak game is more of a nod to old school text and image based RPGs as a genre as a whole rather than one specific game like the other holotapes, but it's definitely my favorite celebration of gaming of the bunch. The next one is pretty simple but really easy to miss. Now we all know the Diamond City, the jewel of the Commonwealth. 
Well, what you may not know is that on one particular day, the city will look different than all the rest of the days. If you visit Diamond City on December 25th, it'll have a Christmas theme with decorative lights and even trees. Oh boy, look at that! The traditional Christmas party hostage negotiations. Kill us all! I'll no! Merry Christmas, everyone! Now for the next one, we're going to talk about something that apparently has been in the Fallout series for a long time, but I had absolutely no idea until recently. Now the objective of terminal hacking is to find the password out of several words on screen with only a few tries. Nice. So what you may not know is that when you're hacking a terminal, you can scan through the miscellaneous figure inputs. Occasionally, you'll see one that becomes a potential entry. If you click on this entry, it will do one of two things. It will refresh your tries to find the correct password, or remove a dud password entirely. One thing we can all agree on is that at the very least when you're hacking, the potential passwords are always just that. Words. Real ones. Like March, Lords, Power, and so on. So that raises the question. If all of these are words, then what the hell is a GURPS? Well, what you may not know is that of all the potential passwords that can show up on a terminal, GURPS is actually the only one that's not a word. It's an acronym. GURPS stands for Generic Universal Role-Playing System. The GURPS system was developed by Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson Games in the late 80s. This role-playing system was the system used for Fallout when both Interplay and Steve Jackson Games were co-creating Fallout, a GURPS post-nuclear adventure. After a fallout of their own, the companies parted ways and Interplay would scrap GURPS to implement the special system in its place. So GURPS being the only acronym of all potential passwords on a terminal was not an accident. It's actually a subtle nod to one of the systems which helped build the foundation for the Fallout franchise. Alright, for the next one we're going to take a look at a special boat. If you follow the river just south of Beantown Brewery, you can find a boat that's pretty banged up. And on the deck of this boat, you can find a skeleton in what appears to be some type of mutated dolphin. But what you may actually not know is that this is a reference to Steven Spielberg's movie Jaws. It depicts a Fallout version of when Quint is devoured by the monstrous Great White, but, you know, it's Fallout, so it's a killer mutated dolphin instead. The skeleton is even wearing very similar clothing to Quint, and next to the body a blue bandana can be found as well, which is Quint's signature headgear. The next one has to do with aliens. This easter egg and the weapon it gives has been in every Fallout game, so it's no surprise that it found its way into Fallout 4 as well. It turns out you can find a downed alien craft by heading south of Beantown Brewery until you reach a part of the forest that's on fire and torn apart. The event to trigger the crash can happen in several locations and is different from player to player, so we won't go over that aspect here. But once you find the crashed alien spaceship, just follow the green blood trail. Eventually, the blood will lead you to a cave. And inside the cave is an alien. Kill the alien and you'll receive the alien blaster. One of the most powerful energy weapons in the Fallout universe. Bingo. Number one also has to do with aliens. We've all more than likely done one of the many possible fetch quests for Scribe Halen of the Brotherhood of Steel. One of the many pieces of tech Halen sends you to recover is called a Flux Sensor. The sensor has a serial code on the back, and it seems like nothing at first glance. Now what you may actually not know is that this code, CM88B and 18092469, is actually a reference to the Nostromo, the ship of Ripley and her crew from the first Alien movies. The numbers 18092469 is the specific number of the Nostromo, and CM88B is the class of the ship, like saying F-16 or B-52. Now as a huge personal fan of both Predator and Alien, I love this extremely subtle easter egg, but I wish once, just 
once Scribe Halen would send me to find the most important relic of the old world. A poster of Mr. Pebbles. Bless you, Mr. Pebbles. You're a hero among men. A hero. Goddamn hero. Are you always being hit by goats over and over again? Gee golly, am I ever, mister? <laughs> You're such an idiot, Billy. Well, looking at the shader aptly named 1832749646473388, you might just think to yourself, hmm, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs>